Great to see you in the middle of the week. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and this is Wednesday, January 10th. Now, tomorrow being Thursday, I've got my live streaming event. I do this every Thursday, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Me and my lovely co-host, Taylor, we go on for about an hour, maybe an hour and a half, looking at tickers that our viewers want us to look at. I share a lot of stocks with you through the week. This gives you an opportunity to bring me a ticker you want me to look at. I'll go over the information, Taylor will look at the charts, and we'll give you two opinions on it, whatever that's worth to you. Now, we can only look at so many tickers regardless how much time we have. So if you really want your ticker looked at, get it in the queue early. I put up a placeholder for the video about lunchtime. You can drop the ticker in the comments then. First come, first served, guaranteed to be covered, and it gives me more time to go over it. That is 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time every Thursday. So what we do on this show is we like to focus in on hot OTC and penny stocks. We're talking about stocks under five bucks that you can find on any market. And we're particularly looking for those that can make us money, right? So I normally find these hot stocks by looking at charts because I can look at a lot of charts in a little amount of time. And just at a glance, I can tell if the chart has heat. I can see if volume's coming in or if there's a breakout setup. Quick, easy. Well, once I see a chart that has heat, then I'll invest the time to go through the filings and the press releases looking for a catalyst. When you find a hot piece of news to match your hot chart, you've got yourself a hot penny stock. And these are the sort of stocks I like to share with you on a regular basis. And of course, I've got some for you right now. First one we're going to take a look at is ZEP Health Corporation, ticker Z-E-P-P, ZEP. Now, her chart's hot. But it's not in any breakout position by any means. No, as you can see, she has broken out a long time ago and she's tapping new highs right now. Not all-time highs, but she is hitting new highs and hitting new resistances and she looks like she has a lot of strength. And she just had news come out about a new product that they are introducing. So Zep finished today just under two bucks at $1.96 and just over 24% gains. And this is a hot penny stock on the major exchange, the New York Stock Exchange, where you're not going to have to pay for any of your transactions like you do on the OTC. You're going to be able to trade at pre-market, after-market, and you're going to be in a market where there's a lot more volume and a lot more money. I like trading penny stocks on the major exchanges. So what is Zep Health all about? Well, they tell us over here in the most recent news press, Zep Health is a global smart wearable and health technology leader that empowers users to live their healthiest lives by optimizing their health, fitness, and wellness journeys through its leading consumer brands, AmazeFit, Zep Clarity, and Zep Aura. Powered by its proprietary Zep Digital Health Management Platform, which includes the Zep OS, AI chips, biometric sensors, and data algorithms, it delivers cloud-based, 24-7 actionable insights and guidance to help users attain their wellness goals. To date, Zep Health has shipped over 200 million units, and its products are available in over 90 countries. Founded in 2013, Zep Health has over 1,000 employees. So the company makes different wearables, as you saw in the pictures, watches, things to help you rest, things to help you get ready to exert yourself. They are covering both spectrums and they got a new product they've just come out with. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Big jump. We've got almost 400% increase in our volume, jumping from 62,000 shares to 223,000 shares. Share structure for Zep? Not bad. Outstanding share count is only 32 million. If that's our float, I am happy. I don't know what the float is. It could be just under 32 million or it could be considerably less. Market cap is pretty decent on Zep. We're up here at $390 million. Financials for Zep? Wow. So they've taken a big drop here, but boy, they were making some good money. They were closing in on a billion dollars. We've got three zeros we've got to add to any of these numbers on any of these charts. Well, at the end of 2022, they lost a big chunk of revenues, dropping down to $595 million, which isn't chump change by any means, but still, that's a big drop for $980 million. And they are bringing home profit steadily. Quarterly reports, 
Uh, being on the New York Stock Exchange, they may not have quarterlies, maybe semi-annuals. Well, they're not going to show them if they do. Let's check out that bit. No balance sheet. Hold on now. Hold on. Yes, we got a balance sheet. You just got to know where to look. All right. Current assets. What do they got in the bank? Roughly 140 million. Woo. Net receivables. Money owed to them. 118 million. Inventory. 147 million. Add up all their assets together, 757 million, three quarter billions in assets. And total liabilities is less than half that, 373 million, which gives us some strong shareholder equity, $384 million. This looks really good. Taking a look at the disclosures for the company, we don't have anything here since November, so let's just pop on over that news. Now, most of their news is about their products, but we know what their products are and it's the ultimate catalyst we're looking for right now. What's gonna get this chart to exceed its highs that it's touching right now? Well, I think maybe this piece of news that came out today. Smart wearables leader Zep Health unveils the AmazeFit Helio Ring for optimum athletic performance. Jumping into that news, they tell us here that the company unveiled AmazeFit Helio Ring the company's first smart ring, developed with a unique focus on providing athletes with the recovery support needed to take their performance to the next level. The company also showcased Zep Clarity Pixie hearing aids, which offer an intelligent solution for people of all lifestyles looking to address hearing loss. Now, a little bit of information about each one of those products. The AmazeFit Helo Ring, Whereas most smart rings are primarily considered sleep trackers for general lifestyle users, the AmazeFit Helio Ring is designed to support athletes who seek the ultimate in recovery monitoring, analysis, and guidance. More than simply tracking this data, the Zep app makes it actionable by converting it into an intuitive daily readiness score that's designed to help the athlete easily understand whether they should focus their day on activity or recovery. Zep Health has empowered this smart ring with access to the company's evolving AI ecosystem. The AmazeFit Helo Ring is able to be both worn complementary to the AmazeFit smartwatch, which in that case, both devices would be fused together and the AI would take all the information and utilize it. And then that hearing aid, the Zep Clarity Pixie represents a leap forward in hearing aid technology offering a natural and seamless auditory experience for individuals with mild to moderate hearing impairment. With its nearly invisible design, wireless connectivity to various devices, and an impressive 17 hour battery life, Zep Clarity Pixie is a game changer in the realm of hearing solutions. Now there's a big market for hearing devices and there's a lot of public companies selling them right now. We're aware of that. These rings, they are coming out as well. I think most of the rings, as they say, though, are for relaxation, monitoring your sleep, and stuff like that. This seems to be a first of its kind for athletes. So we've got a new product here that is going to be coming out right now. They do have other products, and the chart is excited right now, and I think she could hit some new highs. Let's go take a look at this. Let's do some charting now on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. We're taking a look at Zep Health Corporation, ticker ZEPP. Now, I've had to pull up a one day, one year chart if I wanted any resistances. As you can see, the price has made some big moves here recently, and she is closing in on that 52 week high of $2.19. And this is one of our resistances. Underneath that, we are at 205. And currently, she is breaking the resistance of $1.90. Now off of this high bubble, she crashed at 200, got deep underneath it and fell all the way to this low of 96 cents at the beginning of November. And off of that low bubble, there is no doubt about it, she has made a trend change. She got up here to $1.90 from 96, which is over 100% gains. Fell hard, came down here to a 20, respected that for quite a while, and then here, she has just taken off again, tapping that high and then breaking it today. She's looking really good. And all of our oscillators on the one year chart are roasting red hot. Coming down to our six month, four hour view. So she was rolling around here a little bit, but she's really just going sideways and dipping. 
She was fighting the 200 when she's flat. She should have broke out, but instead she broke down, down to this 96, and then she decided to break out. Strong push up through the 200. Look at that volume bar, clear up here. Came down to the 50, pushed herself back up to that 200, bounced on it to make sure it was strong, and she took off. Came back down to her 50, We've got ourselves a W here. You see this big W? Well, normally when you see a W, it means winner. And at the tail end of the W, you would normally see a run, which is exactly what we got here. Now, when I looked at this earlier, she had just tapped this high right here. Now, when I see it, she has broke it and she is closing in on that 52 week high. Volume has been increasing here for a very long time. And all of our oscillators, our RSI, my God, is up at 81. Our MACD is going parabolic. And look at the size of those bars. They are huge. Our PPO is pushing up. Everything looks strong, folks. They're all going to the moon. And if every oscillator is pushing up, you really can't go wrong. Taking a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. Again, she is just going sideways here. She met the 200, bounced off it. Did a rubber ball bounce, came out from underneath that, struggled with it for quite a while. And here, three, four days ago, she did her breakout on the one hour chart. She broke out for two days with just a little bit of climb, but look at today. Today, she jumped from $1.56 up to $1.99, pulling back and continuing her climb after market hours. All of our SMAs, the 20, 50, and 200 haul, have all crossed the 200 and are in the right places. Looking really nice here. Osculators are still great. Every single one of them is pushing up. RSI is at 82 now. Five day, five minute. That's a brilliant chart. That's a perfect chart. We got a low bubble here underneath every single SMA at $1.39. She worked her way up to the 20. Off of the 20, she broke the 50 and the 200. Coming back down, bouncing off the 20, and then changing her trend, starting to climb. And she has just been steady climbing until today when she put it into second or third gear and she revved the engines and took off. Now, she was hanging on the 50 here. You can see she's bouncing off of the 50 quite a lot. She launched away from the 50, came down close to it very, very close, but did not touch it, giving more credence to the 20 day and then climbed up. Now, I like the way she finished the day here, folks. You hear me talk about this a lot. I see this as a pillar, something to strengthen and support the climb. When you build a bridge, you got to put in pillars so it doesn't move around and tip. This came down to all the SMAs up here, 20, 50 down deep into the dirt to steady everything. And now it popped right back up to where it was at. That's what I was looking for. And now she's starting to climb again. I think she's going to take off. Osculators, not as strong as the charts before, but they are all still pushing up and looking good. The RSI has cooled down finally. It is down here now at 57, which is okay. I think Zepp's chart looks really good, folks. She does have some hot news. It's worth putting on your watch list. Our next stock I am quite familiar with. This is Night Food Holdings, ticker NGTF. Now I've been watching this company since she came into the cannabis sector, believe it or not, back in 2019 or 2020, somewhere around there. Now I'm gonna be straight with you, I do not have a catalyst. There is no hot news, there's no new filings. We have no information to match our hot chart. All we've got are technicals. But it is a hot chart, folks. She's been in a downtrend for a long time, had an early breakout, came back down under that 200, which is now flat as a pancake, has been beating her head up against it multiple times, and today she took a bounce, and all the technicals have turned up looking like she's ready to break out over that 200 and take off, catalyst or not. Now, I know a lot of people that play the charts I mean, literally, they don't do any due diligence, don't even look at the news, have no idea why the chart is running, and they do quite well. Me, myself, I need a little more information than that. So let's take a look at Night Foods. Night Food finished today just a little over two cents, 2.15, and just under 13% gains. She is on the middle tier of the OTC, the QB, which we like to refer to as the better tier, it's better than the pinks because you get validated information here. 
you have to audit your financials to be on the QB. That's great for us. That gives us fundamentals. We can now weigh the company up. That makes them more trustworthy, more transparent. They've also got those two pieces of validated information I'm telling you to always look for. And they've got independent directors listed here, telling us they have serious aspirations of uplisting. So what is Night Foods all about? Well, as their name states, they are into night foods. Snacks. They've got cookies, chips, ice cream, and primarily it is the ice cream that they are working on. Now, when I came to know this company, they came into the cannabis sector. No, not selling munchies for those people that got high. They had plans. They were going to actually put CBDs into their products. And the reason they were going to do that, because they are night foods, they know you're eating these before you go to bed. They were going to put in one type of CBD called CBN. This is the CBD that makes you sleepy. When you smoke a joint and get all naughty, that's it. Well, they were going to add these to their products to help you sleep at night. They couldn't do it. The FDA has restrictions against CBDs in food. You can put CBDs in supplements, but you can't put them in food. Whoever thought ice cream was a food? Now, believe it or not, this is a very huge market. Americans spend, you ready for this? over a billion dollars a week in snack foods between dinner and bedtime. That is a $52 billion a year market. It is a huge market. And the company is focusing their business on hotels, right? What a great place to sell your ice cream. Now they didn't put CBDs in it, but they've got something in it that does make you relax. It makes you groggy and tired. So the product is good. And they have just now started getting their other products on the market as well. So what was the relative volume around the company today? We got a jump, don't we? I told you there was a bounce. She went from 80,000 shares to just under 160,000. That's a 100% increase. Share structure for the company. We got about 127 million outstanding shares. Insiders own about 35 million. That gives us all the rest, 91 million. Not a low float, but it's not bad. It's an average float. Market cap for the company, we're at about 2.4 million. Looking at the financials for the company, they're not looking too good. During COVID, they were way down to 241,000. After COVID, they had a nice jump, getting up to 700,000. Since then, they have been falling down to 133,000 at the end of June of 2023. And the worst part is, is that none of these years have they ever brought home a profit. Quarterlies, not looking a whole lot better. Not only are they not bringing in a lot of revenues, but they're not making any profits whatsoever. Let's take a look at that balance sheet. They got a little bit of money in the bank, $44,000. They got a little bit of assets, a half a million, and they got a lot of liabilities, almost 2.2 million, which leaves us with a lot of stockholder deficit of 1.7 million. Taking a look at the disclosures, We've got one that you need to consider, the 10Q, their most recent quarterly report. Not only are these good for the financials folks, every bit of information is in there from the day they were incorporated. Every time they changed their name, did a reverse split, made a deal, a joint venture, a merger, it's all in there. Forget about going to Google, wasting all of your time. Just jump into a financial, save your time, get more information. All right, taking a look at that news now. All right, the most current piece of news we've got is uh, November 1st. They were postponing an investor conference. Looking back over some other news here, Night Food Holdings and Houdini Group announced exclusive license agreement for half-baked trademark. That is the trademark they use for their munchies, not their ice cream, their other stuff. Night food sleep friendly snacks coming soon to select BWH hotel properties in the US. The company's already got contracts with a couple of other hotels, Choice and Siesta, I think it is. And now it looks like they're going third one. This is where they've been really focusing their market. 
I haven't seen a lot of information about supermarkets or anything like that, but they have been focusing in on hotels, which makes sense. It's some place you're going to go to sleep and you're going to go downstairs for a snack and you're going to see sleep time ice cream. Yeah, it's probably going to sell. So that's what's going on with the company. They've got products, they've got ice cream. They're doing okay, but they're not doing great, right? Their financials could use some help, but the chart, it's ready to break out nonetheless. Let's go take a look at this hot chart. Let's take a look now at Night Holdings, ticker NGTF. This is a four hour, six month view with our high back in April, six months ago of just about eight cents. She was on a long, hard fall here, hitting a first support here at uh, three and a half cents, then dropped down to another support at 2.1 cents, which is real important right now. That's where she's beating her head. Once she hit this support, she dipped underneath it, and that was her floor. She went sideways here for a good month, right up underneath that resistance, and you can see our 200-day haul has turned around along with all the SMAs. Now, once she got over the 50-day SMA here, just over a penny and a half, she busted loose, went straight to that 200 and over it. Even though it's too steep to be breaking out now, she did it, and she went to four cents. You're looking at over 250% run there. She stayed up there for about three weeks, fell down to the 200, which is still too steep, and she slipped, fell down here to one penny. And from there, she has been bouncing up to that resistance, getting closer and closer to that 200, and right now she's been beating her head on it. Today, she has turned all of her SMAs, her 200 haul, you can see it's gone blue, it is now starting to turn up. Our 50-day and our 20-day have all turned up. All of our oscillators have turned up. Everything looks like it's ready to break out, even though we don't have a catalyst. The only thing we're missing here is volume. Bring in the volume, and I think we're going to see a serious run. Taking a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. So she was riding her 50-day SMA here, and then she broke out over the 200 with a directional intentional spike another one of my slang terms. When you see a big green bar start down where she's at, that solid bar goes up to the 200, then she spits out a spike way over the 200, then it comes back down higher than where it started from. To me, that is a sincere token sign that she is looking for an opportunity to break out. And what is that opportunity? It's when the 200 gets flat. And by pushing that spike up there real high, that wick is a string attached to all of these SMAs. The higher she can get that price, the more she pulls those SMAs up. So she tugs on that 200, pulling it up so it gets level. She creates her own opportunity. She came back down to the 50, crouched and pounced, got herself up over that 200. She then put a big pillar down through the ground. I've already explained this to you. And off of that pillar, she started climbing fast. We are right up underneath that resistance of 2.1 cents. All of our SMAs are crossing the 200 right now. It does look strong. Osculators look strong too. PPO is pushing up. MACD is pushing up. Lots of green bars. The only thing that's cool, well, planted, is our RSI. It is flat as concrete at 61 right now. Taking a look at our five day, five minute. Well, she's on an uphill climb. She's got some big bounces here. She was at one and a half cents here, put herself up over the 50, took a crouch before a pounce, and right now she's been going sideways. You can see our RSI is super flat here, even though our oscillators are climbing. Pressure is building up, but she's not going anywhere. Why? Well, I think she's waiting for something to push off of. She needs an SMA underneath her feet. So I think once these SMAs come up under her, I don't know if it's the 9, the 20, or the 50, but once they get under her, I'm expecting her to push off. The charts look good to me. There's lots of heat here, even without a catalyst. So I'm putting NGTF on my watch list for tomorrow. I would suggest you do the same. This next stock, I think most of us are familiar with. We talked about it a lot. We just haven't looked at it lately, and I think we should. This is Safety Shot Inc., ticker S-H-O-T. Now, Shot came onto the market in July through a reverse merger with Jupiter Wellness. And from that day, she has been tearing up the charts. She went from $0.31 cents up to $7.50 before pulling back. 
pulling back. No, she fell. Fell all the way down to $2.72, which is bouncing off of the 200 right now. So it's a good time to look at it. The company just released their product in December and everywhere they put it, Amazon and on their site, it just keeps selling out. So things do look good. Shop finished today at $2.72 with almost 3.5% gains. And she too is on the major exchanges. Now, do you remember what Shot does? Safety Shot, a wellness and functional beverage company, is set to launch Safety Shot. They already did that in December. The first patented beverage on earth that helps people feel better faster by reducing blood alcohol content and boosting clarity. Safety Shot has been available for retail purchases since the first week of December of 2023 on the company's website, drinksafetyshot.com, as well as Amazon. The company plans to launch business-to-business -business sales of Safety Shot to distributors, retailers, restaurants, and bars in the first quarter of 2024. Safety Shot plans to spin off legacy assets from its Jupiter Wellness business to unlock value for shareholders. So the company is working on getting their products out there. And I got to imagine any liquor store, ABC, ABC store, package store, anybody that sells alcohol is probably going to want to sell this. They also tell us that they have plans of a spin off, a spin out. They're going to take some of the assets from the company and separate them from everything else and put them onto the NASDAQ, which will give us dividends in a brand new company. So what was the relative volume around shop today? Oh, we had a big drop in volume, going from 5.5 million down to 1.4 million. Now, I was curious about her volume because I know she had a lot of attention getting to that $7.50. So I went over to Yahoo Finance to look at her historical numbers. Would you believe that she had 40 million, 70 million, even 80 million shares when everybody was trading it? So when the stock gets hot, there is a lot of liquidity. Share structure for shot. We got a decent share structure. Only about 40 million shares outstanding. I don't know what the float is, but if it is 40 million, I'm content with that. That is a decent float, but it could be considerably less. Market cap, we got 104 million for the company. Financials for shot. Are they making money? Whoa. Now, you got to remember, the company just came on the market in July, so none of this is their money. Coming over to the quarterlies, the very last one here. They came in July, so this is two months worth of revenues for them. They had $484,000 in two months. Total profit, $58,000 out of that half a million. Looking at the balance sheet for the company. Woo, they got a lot of money in the bank, $4.3 million. Total assets, $11.3 million. And liabilities is a lot less, $4.6 million. So that means this company that just got on the market already has $6.7 million worth of stockholder equity. Taking a look at the disclosures. All right, anytime you have a 10Q come out, you also have an 8K come out, but you'll notice both of these have an A behind them. That means they were amended. I thought this might be the annual, but it's a little early for the annual. This was for September. They tell you that right there. Outside of that, I couldn't find any other filings to look at. So let's take a look at that news. Now we're not gonna dive into any of this, but I just wanna show you the progress that they've been making. Back on the 4th of December, Safety Shot is now available on leading e-commerce platform, amazon.com. Product sells out within hours after being released a day early. Then here on the 11th of December, Safety Shot sells out on first day online at their own website. So everywhere they put them, they're selling out. And the most recent piece of news came out about a week ago, January 3rd. Safety Shot to garner global exposure with its brand activation event at Coachella, one of the top music festivals in the world. There are actually two festivals, one that was just last weekend and one that's coming up in April. And between the two, you have over a quarter million people show up there and they drink. <laughs> they'll probably buy one of these on the way home for the next day. So they're getting their name out there. They're going to try to distribute it. They're advertising it. They're showing it off. I think it's going to be a hot product, folks. 
I've never tried it, but then I really don't drink anymore. My days of drinking and getting drunk are long gone. But for those that wake up with hangovers, if this actually works, what other product can compete against it? It would be the hottest product on the market. Let's go take a look at this chart now. We got ourselves a wild chart here, folks. This is Safety Shot, ticker SHOT. We are looking at a six month, four hour view. As you can see, from April to June, she was doing absolutely nothing, completely docile, hitting a low here in June of 31 cents. Off that bubble, she changed her trend, climbing to an ultimate high here of $7.50 in November. Now it's right there, July 7th, when she had her reverse merger, huge poke in volume, change of trend. Everything was going up nice and evenly until we looked at it. <laughs> this is October 30th when we took a look at it. She was roughly $1.25 and from there she took off to that $7.50. 600% run right there. Now I don't anticipate anybody was patient enough to get the full 600%, but hopefully you got a couple hundred percent out of that run. After she hit this high, she came back down to the 200 day haul here, scooted across that, got up to a high of $6.38 and then started the crash. And she was struggling to stay up, but couldn't get up over that 200 haul. I told you these penny stocks respect the 200 haul. She came back down crashing through the 200 and look where she's at folks. Let me back this up just enough. You can see this channel, which she was riding in, trying to break out of, and finally doing it. She's come right back to that channel and bounced off of it perfectly. One, two, three, four, five, six bounces off of this, and now she's starting to climb. She is right up underneath her nine day SMA, which is critical. You can't climb until you're on top of your nine. So that's the first thing we gotta do. We've gotta get this on top of the nine. All of our other SMAs look dangerous. They are all pushing down hard. None of them looking like they're gonna turn around right now. So we would need a strong push here. Our oscillators, what do they say is happening? Well, there was just a hint of turnaround on our PPO. She is flat, but I can see she is just now trying to come up. You can see we've got a crossover on our MACD right now. And oh my God, look at our RSI. It is in the basement, folks. 30 is the lowest you want to ever see it go. We are down here at 28 right now. Taking a look at our 20 day, one hour view. So she took a nice flying jump here up to that high of 512, starting off at 341 and then just fell without any slowing down at all, all the way down, tagging. One tag, you can see that folks, tagged our channel, came back up, went sideways, and then she's broke through her 20 and is right up underneath that 200 haul, fighting to get through right now. You can see that. She pushed herself on top of the nine, on top of the 20. This is good positioning. She just needs some more volume. Things are looking better on our oscillators. Our PPO is starting to climb. It's just about ready to do a crossover. You can see my ADX is falling. You see that opening that you got between my PPO and ADX, the blue line up, the pink line down. Well, when those two are spreading apart, guaranteed your price is rising and it works exactly the opposite. If you see the two coming together, your price is falling. Like right here, see it falling? Well, our blue line is coming down. Our pink line is coming up. And when they start spreading, it starts climbing. And right now, believe it or not, even though it looks like it's falling, the chart, the oscillators say she is about ready to start climbing. Our RSI is pretty cool. That's down there at 42 right now. Five day, five minute. Oh boy, what a drop there. But that's what we're playing. We are playing the bounce. She was up here at 358, crushed the 200, bounced, actually pierced the channel on the five minute, bouncing on it a couple times. Look at our 200 haul turning around, crushing the 200 day SMA. Every single SMA is crossed. You can't expect it to just go straight up. I normally expect it to come down and hit the 200 once or twice before it goes. Well, look. Our 200 is at a slant when she broke out. She came down, tried to bounce on it, still a little slanted, but right now she is totally flat, totally flat. She's gonna hit that and it's 
far as I'm concerned, she is going to climb. Though there's going to be some resistance because we've got our 50-day and our 200 haul above her head right now. Oscillators are weak. After all this fall and that big drop right there after market hours, everything says it is falling. But I am looking for a bounce. This is a perfect flat SMA, and that just came to it and not below it. Looking good to me. I think shot is worth putting on your watch list. As I said, she gets a lot of liquidity when she gets hot. She was doing up to 80 million shares a day. Today, she only did 1 million shares. When people get excited about this again, we could see another multi-dollar run. Wouldn't that be fun? Now, I've given you three nice stocks here, folks, but of course, I couldn't get to all the information as I would like to do. So do your own due diligence. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.